let's have a look at this. Now, for starters, we've got an answer for two already. A radius of 2.8 centimeters. What do you think? Yeah. yeah. Yep, looking good. And you can actually see Cushy's very helpfully giving us some work in. Have a look at her first line. I think it's pretty much bad. I don't think I could write a better answer than this. What, what does this line mean? Can you look carefully at the top line? What does it mean? Yeah, Ryan. It's like the equation or formula to make the volume. Perfect. This is literally the volume formula, but it's been substituted correctly in, right? With, we don't know what the radius is, so she's named Z. That's the height as per the diagram, and that's the volume as said in the question. And the working just worked out, which is why I'm giving a big thumbs up to that. Now this one up here, I, I've seen a few different answers around the room. So before we get to what this is, I want to show all of you how to do pronumerals on your calculator. Because I said, remember I said, in equations they're great because you never need to doubt. You can always just test, pop your number into the top line, and then just see what happens. If it's right, you should get the same thing on both sides. But with something like this, it's a little less straightforward. So let me show you how. And for this bit, I just want your pens out of your hands. Please watch with me very carefully and go one step at a time. Now, I apologize. I know not everyone has the same calculator as me. I'm fairly sure, though, most of you do. And for those who are different, we can work out what the functions are. So here's what I'm going to do. On your calculator, and um, there's quite a few steps to this. So I will show it to you first, and then I'll write it down. But it's important that you follow me because you obviously you miss one step. You're like, what's going on? I don't know what to do next. So be paying very close attention. Once you go through some calculations, suppose you get a number as an answer. So I'm going to put in, and can we all put in 4 elevenths? Okay. So once you've entered in 4 elevenths, or maybe you typed in 4 divided by 11, I want you to know it's here in the, um, in the bottom right-hand corner. Oh, by the way, Michelle, I should have asked before. Can you see this on there, or is it too bright? Because I never... It's all right? It's readable? Okay. Now, this is really important. While the 411s is there in the display, not just here, it's got to be there, watch the buttons I'm about to press. See this button here, in the um, sort of in the middle, in the bottom of the grey ones? It says RCL. That stands for recall. I'll come back to that in a second. Just above it, it says STO, which stands for store. So I can use this button to store. It's a bit hard to see on here, but you should have a bunch of red letters above here. I've got A, B, C, D, E, F, X, Y, and M. You might just have, um, you might have less letters than that, but that should be pretty close. So watch how I'm going to do this. Button for button. I'm going to go shift, then I'm going to press recall. You will know you did it right if up here in the top left hand corner it says store. Then you just have to pick a letter. Um, I'm going to pick A because, oh, actually no, why not pick X? So X is there, right? So I'm not going to press any other buttons. Just this bracket, which has X above it. Okay? If you've done it right, it'll say that. Do you notice that? Have you got it? Okay, fantastic. Now what that means is, now you can use the letter X, the printing will X, and every time you write in X, it'll say 4 11ths. So watch. Uh, what do we got here? On the left-hand side, I've got 1 minus 2X on 3. So here's my fraction. I'm going to write 1 minus 2, and to get to the X, did you notice... Next to the shift button, there's an alpha button. Stands for alphabet. So if you press alpha and then press the bracket again, it'll give you an X. And the calculator has designated that as 4 elevenths. So now I'll complete the fraction. It gives me that. Okay. So I'm just testing out, right? So that's what the left-hand side is. I keep that in my mind, 1 over 11, and then I just test out the right-hand side in exactly the same way. This is actually a very easy example, so I could do it in my head, but if you want to, you just say x divided by 4. And sure enough, thumbs up, 1 over 11. Okay? Now this becomes very, very handy later on if you end up having like some garbled mess on one side, and you're like, man, I don't want to do that in my head and manipulate it. You can quickly work out whether you've got the right answer or not. Am I supposed to be negative? Is it 11 over 4 or 4 over 11? I can never remember. You can test it. You don't need to have any doubt. Does that make sense? So, now pick up your pens. And let's just write this, because I promise you the next time you need this will probably be far enough in the future that you don't remember how we did this, okay? So here's what you do. Step one, get an answer. Like, hit equals. 
to whatever calculation you're doing, like we did 4 divided by 11, once you hit equals, then you've got a number here. It has to be there, after, otherwise this whole process doesn't work. Okay? Once your answer is equals that, the second thing you do is you go shift, and then do you remember which button it was? Ah, now I said I would come back to that. If you've got a whole bunch of letters, like you've got A, B, C, D, E, whatever, you can check what a number is by saying, not, don't press shift, just say recall X. So watch this. I'm going to clear everything and just say recall X. And it faithfully returns me whatever value I put in there. Okay? So you might be working with lots of different numbers and you're like, I can't remember what I used, so recall will get it for you. To store it, you go <coughs> shift recall and then pick a letter. Pick a letter. If you actually do this in your working and you do it substantially, I recommend that when you've got your answer here, you actually say something like, um, over here, 4 over 11 into x. Just for yourself to remember, some of the questions we're going to look at later this year are really quite long, and you just won't remember what you put where, so just write something down. Uh, once you've done that, to retrieve that pronumeral, or to use the pronumeral, you press the, do you remember which one it was in the top? Alpha. You press that, and then again, you just pick a letter, whichever one you want, or whichever one you're currently using. Okay? Um, and that will stay what it is uh, until you erase it. So even if I turn the calculator off, which I will do right now, if you turn it off, and you turn it back on again, and you say recall X, it's still there. In fact, if you want to get rid of it, you have to purposefully clear it, which is what this clear button is above 9. I can show you how to do that if you want, but there's no reason why not. If I get something else, like say, oh, I don't know, uh, the square root of, sorry, the square root of 7.955, sorry, 57, whatever it is. Suppose that number is important to me, maybe I want that to be x now. If I go shift recall x, it just wipes out whatever was there before. So my 4 over 11 is gone. Now that's what x is and it'll, it won't remember what it was before. Okay? <laughs> So this is super, super handy. Um, you will keep on using that all the way through year 11 and 12, so it's worth having the idea now.